And a very good morning and welcome to the Emirates Arena here in Glasgow. To Babin and Europe's live coverage of the Scottish Open Grand Prix 2015. This, of course, the second day's play, qualification and the first round of the men's singles yesterday. And we'll be bringing you all the live action from court one, as you can see in all its glory on screen. Some of Europe's best badminton players look to make it through to the finals come Sunday and on court. First match, as you can see by the graphic, mixed doubles. Hot favourites, Durkin and Vislova of Russia. Number six seeds for this tournament against this crack English pairing, Harry Arxi. And the returning Sarah Walker, Sarah, returning from a year marred by injury and trying to fight her way back to top of quality badminton. And we have a full day's lineup of matches for you here from court one. Continue with a mixed doubles between the French and the Scots, Adam Hall and Eleanor O'Donnell after this, and then the much anticipated women's singles, Kirsty Gilmore, top seed against Julie McPherson in that all Scottish women's singles opening round. But for now, we'll concentrate on this mixed doubles match in the fabulous Emirates Arena, of course, which will be home to the World Championships in 2017. And already the arena starting to fill up with some school children, plenty of schools invited here for the opening days and packing in to watch some top quality badminton as the players warm up. On screen, as you can see, school children. There's been uh, plenty of badminton activity for all the schools here during the week. A badminton fair held yesterday in the Chris Hoy Velodrome next door to this arena. And it's the uh, Russians in pink and the English purple and black backed shirts. No head-to-head -head information between these pairs, of course. And the <laughs> really, this should be a routine opening round for the Russians. Nina Vizlova, of course, women's doubles bronze medalist from the London Olympics where she partnered Valeria Sorokina to that bronze medal. And partners on and off the court, of course, Vitaly and Nina. They've had a, an impressive run of form recently, the Russians. At the beginning of the Badminton Europe season, winning the Prague Open. And then uh, last 16 at the French Open Super Series. A semi-final at the Bitburger Grand Prix Gold. A step higher than this Grand Prix here in Scotland. And a semi-final in Bahrain only a couple of weeks ago. And sitting inside the world's top 20. And it's the English without a ranking. And I'm joined here this morning by Ray Stevens again. Ray, very good to have you here. And... Uh, I think, Ray, th there really should be only one winner of this mixed doubles pair, this mixed doubles match. Thanks, Mark, and it's really good to join you as well because uh, super matches we had yesterday on the TV court, and I hope it continues. And remember, if you're watching, don't forget to use the hashtag SOGP. For all your tweets and social media interaction. The Russian pair have been around for a long while now, haven't they, Mark? They're yeah, I think such an experienced. Uh, we play at a very high level. We certainly can call them veterans at this stage in their careers, but uh, still play at an extremely high level. Over, two, three. Certainly has not been a good week or two for Russian sport in general, with all the uh, breaking news oh. regards doping, etc. But uh, Vitaly and Nina, who I know pretty well, certainly Vitaly is excellent English, very well spoken in English. Nina. 
has decent enough English, but a little bit shy when it comes to speaking it. But as I said, they are partners both on and off the court. So they're quite comfortable in each other's company. Travel everywhere together. One for the ladies who uh, do well to emulate uh, uh, Vislova, the way she can uh, keep her racket up at the net and uh, command that net. Um, but so technic good. technically, you certainly wouldn't be showing videos of her. <laughs> you wouldn't, but she's very effective, and you won't see her make many errors. No, that's for sure. Yeah, good vision from Durkin. Of course, Vitali, you can see by the strapping on his left calf, has suffered an injury, sort of uh, mid-year, and really spent the whole summer trying to recover and get back in this important Olympic year. And you would expect the Russians to gather in one of those Olympic qualification spots. Always so difficult to qualify in doubles for the Olympics, given it's a 16 draw. You're guaranteed to have at least two Chinese, two Japanese, Danish pair, and all of a sudden now you're down to the last few spaces to get into the Olympics, and you have about 10, 15 pairs this battling for the same spot. This is a pair that did quite well at the last Olympics, though, isn't it? They, um, did they, or Adcock uh, and... Uh, Bankier went out to yeah, the yeah. Russian pair. Well, they did, but uh, I think that was a horrific Olympics yep. for Adcock and Bankier. They played absolutely horrendously that week. Uh, and too much pressure. Yeah, I think a little bit too much pressure. They lost all matches, if I remember yeah, correctly. That's right. Yeah, that's right. They didn't have an easy uh, pool of mm. players. And of course, in the Olympics, you have to have the continental representation also. So uh, you have the Australian pair, Middleton and Chu, who are probably top, top 30 kind of uh, pair, but they will get an automatic position at the Olympic Games because of their uh, continental representation, which takes another uh, spot out of the equation. And Robin Middleton was actually an ex um England player, wasn't he? he was, yeah, uh, played for England. England. I remember yeah. seeing Robin partnering Chris Langridge to a men's doubles title in Sweden in 2010, I think. He still has his, has his English accent. He's still a very good player. He's, yeah. Um, shows how tough the sport is when uh, you're that good and you can't keep in the squad. Well, it's a good start from the English, to be fair. I think Nina certainly prefers to play in the afternoon. She's not an early morning player. In the hotel, you see her arriving downstairs for breakfast, and she has. You certainly wouldn't be approaching her to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the interval lead for the English pair. Arxie and Walker, and uh, I know a little bit about Sarah Walker. I have never seen Harry play before, uh, and I know nothing about him. So I do see Andy Ellis in the coach's corner. Andy, of course, the boyfriend of Sarah Walker. Nice smash into the body 12, seven. from Arxi. Have you seen the English boy before? No, well, I've never seen him before, never ever. Seen, no. I haven't, and uh, not a bad player, is he? He played some qualification yesterday in men's doubles. Yeah. And it was the first time I saw him.
really quite steady and solid. Mm. You know, after I would see a lot of these players coming through the junior ranks when you cover junior tournaments, and I've just I've never come across him, so he possibly is one of these late bloomers. But it's a really good start from the English. Well, what I'm seeing at the moment, I'm quite impressed. Because Sarah's been around for a long while, hasn't mm. she? Yeah, she's been around a bit now. Blighted by injury. A singles player, really, but uh, I think st just coming back from injury, taking on some doubles and some mixed doubles, just to get that sharpness back. I'm, I'm surprised the R Russians are actually giving away the attack far too easy here. And uh, then what's happening is they're really attacking Vislova, which is the thing to do if you get the lift. You've got to try and attack the lady. You know, history will state it and, and the stats show it that if you want to beat this Russian pair, beat them in the first round. They tend to sometimes just be a little bit complacent but if they get momentum if they're still in a competition by the quarter final you can start assuming that they're going to really push for the title in any tournament and generally as you go further into a tournament also quarterfinals semi-finals and finals tend to be in the afternoon which suit Nina a little bit better right <laughs> The lead that's developed is looking good for the English pair. Yeah, you'd certainly fancy them now to go on and take this opening game. Good angle on the cross court smash from Durkin. And as I was saying, they get the lift and they go straight for the lady, and that's mm. so often what happens. And that's really why a lady should hold the net as much as you can. Risk it at the net rather than giving him the lift away. Super play. Russians must be seeded in this event, Mark. Yeah, What's six the seeds. They're number six seeds, mm -hmm. aren't they? And as I said, you know, they've come into this tournament on the back of some really good form. Sometimes also in a match like this, when you're an unknown pair, you know, it takes these established pairs just a little bit of time to figure you out, come up with a plan, and then put that plan into effect. All these established pairings are just so used to playing each other week on week. Oh, super from Durkin. Even that little uh, three-point lead that they've got, it, it makes it very, very tight for this set. Four points is quite a lot um, in this sort of rally scoring system. You can see Nina just starting to bubble a little bit and uh, starting to get into it, a few fist pumps starting to come from her now, and that, that's the telltale, telltale sign that uh, she's just starting to find a rhythm. Or in layman's terms, she's starting to wake up. Yeah. <laughs> A 
It's a good return and serve there. There they go, finding the lady again. Sudden from nowhere, Ray, they've leveled it up. Certainly, a feature of the Russians' game is they're very, very composed, never get rattled. You very rarely see the panic in, on court. And from 18 14 behind, of course, they were 13 7 behind, and now they're in the lead at 19 18. 2018 and it's game point from nowhere for the Russians. Yeah, and they've not given the lift away at all in the uh, last part of the game. A little bit of variation in the serve, serving out wide from Durkin. Yeah, and there it is, the smash down the winner from Vislova. And really, the English had that game in their pockets. They did, and there was gaps all over the place, except Sarah Walker just lifted that shuttle, and uh, I saw gaps that she just could have played into where she would have got the pair onto the attack. Yeah, and probably... A singles player's mind working against an out and out mixed doubles player. Absolutely. Mm. Oh! And really, they should be kicking themselves there, Mark, because they had that um, match. They were the ones in ascendancy and they should have uh, been able to put more pressure on than that. Yeah, 18 14 ahead, Ray. And then six points in a row on the serve of Vitaly Durkin brought the Russians right back into it. You know, you could certainly be forgiving for forgiven for saying that you would expect the Russians really to power on from here certainly Harry has impressed me with his play in that first game A player I've never seen or heard of before Very solid, but just fell apart a little bit at the end. Again, all that attack from the Russians being focused on Sarah Walker. Absolutely. Durkin reads the game very well, really can exploit those open spaces in behind when the opportunity presents itself. And just as you're saying that, Mark, that's exactly what was going through my head. Mm. Exactly what you're saying there. Just makes the right choices all the time. And even to the point of that smash, it was... Uh, Right on the right hip, which is a classic place to uh, hit a person. He's really picking the spots to hit.
good rally, probably the best rally of the match, to be fair. And uh, resolute defence from the English. I thought Durkin had it when he rushed in at that point. It was a great rally. There was three cross-court clears mm -hmm. in that rally to the girl. And that's a really good place to put the girl because it brings the girl out and makes her cover a lot more court, which is exactly what you want in mixed. There's that vision again from Durkin. Vitaly actually looking very, very relaxed. Six, three. And the drift was going that way yesterday and it looks like the drift is still uh, going towards that, so Out. it's good to attack from the side that the Four, English are on. Six. I think I've, that's four poor serves I've counted now from Nina. Ah, superb. Service over. Seven, four. What a shot. What a shot. Let it pull cross court. Drop. Nice and soft, but heavily disguised from Durkin. You can tell, you know, from Durkin's body language, I think he's quite confident that they're going to win this match. Absolutely, but he's yeah. making the right choice all the time. It's an absolute pleasure to watch. I, I was speaking to him in Prague, and uh, they were just coming back from injury, and they won that tournament, and uh, he'd been out of the game for a couple of months. And he said the being out of the game made him realise how much he missed being out of the game, you know, and uh, how injury sometimes refocuses the mind and uh, makes you just enjoy it a little bit more when you come back. And you come back with that hunger. Mm. And it was, you know, a hugely important time to come back with that hunger at the really, you know, the business end of an Olympic qualification campaign. And you've mentioned, Mark, about how successful the Russians are. Um, at, at this level and um, they, they win, they get used to winning, they expect to win all the time and that's a fantastic attribute for a player. But this Russian pair particularly, they're just, they're just caught in that gap between too good for circuit and just not quite good enough to be challenging the top players at Super Series level. Nice angle on the smash. The English still battling away.
bunch of rackets. 14, seven. Double scores, 14-7 in favor of the Russians. Russians in pink for this from the camera. On screen, Sarah Walker. Unlucky for Nina, went for the interception. You were speaking yesterday about soft drops. We've certainly seen plenty of them today from uh, Vitaly Durkin. Yeah, I think you see it a lot more in doubles than you do mm. ever in singles yeah. now. But I know um, recently I was looking for a slow drop and I spent about three weeks going through um, footage to try and find some. So it's uh, not an easy job. It's a slow drop has virtually disappeared out of the uh, men's singles mm. game. Shuttle was out, but I think the service fault call was called at the same time. That's a good serve, that serve. As a coach, you're so often sitting behind a court and on the tight points, you're just asking for that player to put a good serve in. It's a run of three points now, and that's um, a sign of good serving. Durkin, who has the uncanny ability just to exploit the space. Did well the English to win that point because they were defending and uh, there was lots of uh, pressure play for them. Oh, after all that hard work. Russians shouldn't have got away with that point. No way. Well read by Durkin. The Russians now within two of, of advancing to the next round. This first round of the mixed doubles. The 2015 Scottish Grand Prix. And you just get the feeling that the Russians can uh, put the pressure on when they want now. They, they look so comfortable on that court. Russians will play the winners of the match on the adjoining court between the Swedes and the French. 17, 19. Currently, the French have won the first game. The Swedes are up in the second. Kersudi and Palermo and Rupinen and Hogstrom. That must have been four out the back in the last half a dozen points, uh, Mark. So that's a good way to win a point. Just get them lifting and... Uh, Get them pushing for the back line, and it's hard to keep it in to that end. 26 minutes gone. It's match point for Durkin and Vislova. It's 
quite a short time for a match, isn't it? 26 minutes, it seems. play again from Arxi battling away the English and uh, I expected the Russians to walk away with this in my opening comments and it certainly has been an encouraging an encouraging performance from the English now I still think Vizlova and Durkin are playing well within themselves yeah. but uh, three points in a row I've been uh, very impressed with Harry uh, mm. As they get to the pressure points, the um, Russians pile on the pressure. Yeah. He was quite comfortable, you know, when they're three or four down, nothing to lose, good serves, and then when there was a pressure serve needed. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, there's, there's Durkin exploiting the space and two quick points. And it's the game. The Vizlova and Durkin in pink, 21, 19, 22, 20. A shaky start. But the Russians, never the best early in the morning, so they'll be happy with that and be happy to be in the next round. Very good, solid performance from Harry Askey, though. I was quite impressed with him. Yeah, and a smile on the face of Sarah Walker. You know, Sarah's coming back from injury and happy to be back and great to see her back. So we'll take a very, very short break. I don't go anywhere and we'll be back momentarily with further live coverage from the Scottish Open Grand Prix. The next round will be another mixed doubles. And that match will be between Mittelheiser and Fontaine of France against Adam Hall and Eleanor O'Donnell of Scotland. <laughs> 